Solar flares are sudden and intense bursts of energy that are released from the sun's atmosphere. They occur when charged particles in the sun's plasma form intense magnetic field lines that can suddenly shift or realign, releasing an enormous amount of energy. These events can be classified based on their strength, with the most powerful flares being classified as X-class. They are typically associated with strong bursts of electromagnetic radiation across a wide range of frequencies, including high-energy X-rays and gamma rays. While X-class flares are relatively rare, they can occur at any time during the sun's 11-year cycle of activity. During periods of increased solar activity, the likelihood of X-class flares increases. When an X-class solar flare occurs, it can cause disruptions in satellite communications and power grids, as well as potentially pose a risk to astronauts in space. X-class solar flares can release up to a billion times more energy than a small solar flare. The Carrington event is a particularly famous example of an X-class solar flare and was one of the most powerful solar flares ever recorded peaking between September 1st and September 2nd in 1859. During the Carrington event, the sun released a massive burst of charged particles that traveled towards Earth at high speed. When these particles reached our planet, they interacted with the Earth's magnetic field, creating intense geomagnetic storms that caused widespread disruption to telegraph systems across Europe and North America. In some cases, telegraph operators received electric shocks from their equipment, and telegraph paper caught fire due to the intense electrical currents. The Carrington event was so strong that auroras, which are the northern and southern lights, were visible as far south as Cuba and Hawaii, and even in some parts of the world where they are not typically seen. If a similar event were to occur today, it could cause widespread disruption to satellite and power grid systems, potentially leading to long-lasting power outages and other disruptions to modern technology. Scientists continue to study the sun's activity in order to better understand and predict the likelihood of such events in the future. Solar activity follows an 11-year cycle, during which the sun oscillates between two main states, the solar minimum and the solar maximum. During the solar minimum, flare activity is at its lowest, while during the solar maximum, flare activity tends to be the strongest. On average, a solar cycle generates close to 200 flares, most of which occur during the peak period. Solar flares and other space weather phenomena can cause damage to power grids, radiation exposure for occupants of space habitats, and high-altitude aircraft. However, the risk of harm arising from these events is generally lower than what media reports often suggest, according to heliophysicists and other scientists studying space weather. Even the most severe solar outbursts in recent times have had limited impacts. This is partly because space weather, despite the unlikely possibility of widespread electricity blackouts, typically does not affect everyday electronic devices such as phones and laptops. However, while consumer electronics may not be at risk, coronal mass ejections can pose a threat to power grids by interacting with the Earth's magnetic field and inducing excess electrical currents that can last for hours. Strong solar storms can cause substantial damage to unprotected transformers along power grids, leading to reduced capacity and requiring costly repair and replacement work. However, it is important to note that such events are more likely to occur in long cables or pipelines, rather than individual households. Therefore, households are generally not a significant concern when it comes to the damage caused by solar storms. In the event that a single highly charged particle was to strike your electronic device, there is a possibility that it would fry that device, but the probability is extremely low and statistically would not affect a wide range of devices. The average increases with altitude as a byproduct of the thinning atmosphere, which offers less protection against radiation. The solar flares tend to concentrate at the polar regions, which is why jet travel is often routed away from the poles during increased activity. In the unlikely chance of a Carrington event-type solar flare, the dangers to a jet's electronics would increase, but the Hollywood scenario of planes falling from the sky is not realistic, with the more plausible likelihood of warning lights going off, and the increased stress of the pilots dealing with the added workload. Because of the more realistic concern of disruption to the power grid, space weather forecasting is a fundamental part of protecting us from such events. Space weather forecasting involves predicting and tracking solar activity and its effects on Earth and near-Earth space environments. Along with solar flares, these activities also include sunspots, coronal mass ejections, and solar wind affecting the Earth's magnetic field and ionosphere. To forecast solar activity, scientists monitor the sun using various tools, such as telescopes and satellites, to observe sunspots, 
changes in magnetic fields, and other indicators of solar activity. This information is used to create models that predict the likelihood and intensity of solar flares and CMEs. The Space Weather Prediction Center, part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is responsible for monitoring and forecasting space weather in the United States. The SWPC issues alerts and warnings for space weather events that may affect various technologies, such as power grids, satellites, and GPS systems. The center also provides information to help prepare and protect critical infrastructure and facilities from space weather impacts. In addition to the SWPC, there are several other organizations around the world that monitor and forecast space weather, including the European Space Agency's Space Situational Awareness Program and the Japan Meteorological Agency's Space Weather Forecast Center. In order to better monitor and understand these events, the Parker Solar Probe was launched by NASA on August 12, 2018 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. NASA's historic Parker Solar Probe mission is revolutionizing our understanding of the Sun, where changing conditions can propagate out into the solar system, affecting Earth and other worlds. Parker Solar Probe travels through the Sun's atmosphere, closer to the surface than any spacecraft before it, facing brutal heat and radiation conditions to provide humanity with the closest ever observations of a star. In order to unlock the mysteries of the Sun's atmosphere, Parker Solar Probe uses Venus's gravity during seven flybys over nearly seven years to gradually bring its orbit closer to the Sun. The spacecraft will fly through the Sun's atmosphere as close as 3.8 million miles to our star's surface well within the orbit of Mercury, and more than seven times closer than any spacecraft has come before. Parker Solar Probe performs its scientific investigations in a hazardous region of intense heat and solar radiation. The spacecraft will fly close enough to the Sun to watch the solar wind speed up from subsonic to supersonic, and it will fly through the birthplace of the highest energy solar particles. To perform these unprecedented investigations, the spacecraft and instruments are protected from the sun's heat by a 5-inch thick carbon composite shield, which needs to withstand temperatures outside the spacecraft that reach nearly 2,500 Fahrenheit, or 1,377 degrees Celsius. Parker Solar Probe carries four instrument suites designed to study magnetic fields, plasma and energetic particles, and image the solar wind. The Parker Solar Probe was joined by the Solar Orbiter, which launched from Cape Canaveral on February 9, 2020. It now follows an elliptical orbit around the Sun, completing one revolution every 168 days. Solar Orbiter is an international cooperative mission between ESA, the European Space Agency, and NASA that addresses a central question of heliophysics. How does the Sun create and control the constantly changing space environment throughout the solar system? The Sun creates what's known as the heliosphere, a giant bubble of charged particles and magnetic fields blown outward by the Sun that stretches more than twice the distance to Pluto at its nearest edge, enveloping every planet in our solar system and shaping the space around us. To understand it, Solar Orbiter is traveling as close as 26 million miles from the Sun, inside the orbit of Mercury, to measure the magnetic fields, waves, energetic particles, and plasma escaping the Sun while they are still in their pristine state before being modified and mixed in their long journey from the Sun. With a scientific payload of 10 different instruments, each complementing and supporting the others, Solar Orbiter combines high-resolution telescopes with measurements from the environment directly surrounding the spacecraft. Together, the observations create a one-of-a-kind, comprehensive picture of the Sun's inner workings and how they can affect the space environment further out in the solar system. Accurately predicting a solar flare is at the forefront of the scientific goals of solar physicist Kanya Kusano of Japan. In the summer of 2020, Kanya and his colleagues published a new paper in the prestigious journal Science, outlining a new method for predicting potentially dangerous solar flares. Impressively, the method successfully predicted seven out of nine of the biggest X-class flares from the last solar cycle. The method also provided the exact location where each flare would begin and set limits on how powerful it would be. In 2023, scientists are using new information provided by the Solar Dynamics Observatory to predict solar flares. In the blazing upper atmosphere of the Sun, a team of scientists have found new clues that could help predict when and where the Sun's next flare might explode. Researchers from Northwest Research Associates, or NWRA, identified small signals in the upper layers of the solar atmosphere, the corona, that can help identify which regions on the Sun are more likely to produce solar flares, 
energetic bursts of light and particles released from the sun. They found that above the regions about to flare, the corona frequently produced small-scale flashes, like small sparklers before the big fireworks. Scientists have previously studied how activity in lower layers of the sun's atmosphere, such as the photosphere and chromosphere, can indicate impending flare activity in active regions, which are often marked by groups of sunspots, or strong magnetic regions on the surface of the sun that are darker and cooler compared to their surroundings. We can get some very different information in the corona than we get from the photosphere or surface of the sun, said K.D. Leka, lead author on the new study who is also a designated foreign professor at Nagoya University in Japan. Our results may give us a new marker to distinguish which active regions are likely to flare soon and which will stay quiet over an upcoming period of time. Combining all this information from the surface up through the corona should allow forecasters to make better predictions about when and where solar flares will happen. All this information can help grid operators take action to mitigate possible threats, such as decreasing power and bringing backup systems online. The threat of the next Carrington event is very real and is estimated to occur every 100 years with an event 100 times more powerful, possibly occurring once every 1,000 years. Scientists continue to work on predicting these events as technology breaks new ground and our dependence on electrical energy increases. As we look to space, the new frontier, these predictions could have life or death consequences for the pioneers who risk their lives and the lives of their families in the pursuit of exploration and discovery.